Welcome to the Quantum World uh, TV, and this morning we have a special guest, uh, Nassim Haramein. And uh, this will be a very special emission, and, and thank you to be with us uh, this morning to share this uh, information, new inf not new information, but you know, very actual information about the, the structure of the universe. Uh, this will be a, a morning where we will uh, again push the, the frontier of understanding of human being, because for us at Quantum University, it's uh, something that is very dear to us, how to understand the mechanic mm -hmm. uh, of uh, how works uh, the brain, the mind, the body, and, and not only that, to give this uh, scientific foundation of what I call uh, the, a, a new curriculum for modern medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and Nassim, is, is very, you are very special. If I look at your uh, uh, journey, you ah, know, yes. <laughs> uh, born in Geneva, and uh, yesterday I realized you, you live also in Canada. Yeah, most of my childhood. And, and probably one of your most uh, important uh, threat or feature in your curriculum is he, he speak French. Uh, yes. Not only that, he speak, he speak uh, Quebecer, so yeah, that's, uh, that's I, something we have in common. Yeah, I can speak and, Quebecer. And, and sometimes I say, you know what, God uh, doesn't speak maths, he doesn't speak quantum physics, he speak French. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the language of love, so. Oh, that's right. But we will see in a few minutes that he also speaks of fractals, right? That's right. <laughs> Maybe French fractals. <laughs> French fractals. <laughs> so, uh, he was uh, born in Geneva and already at the age of nine, you know, he had uh, discovered the universal dynamic of matter and energy. So, I think you were very, uh, you know. I was thinking about it, definitely. And, I, you know, there is, uh, I saw you online explaining, you know, how you were even challenging teachers at that time yes and, uh, yes so it's it's pretty amazing it got me in trouble yeah of times. <laughs> and today he's a director of a research and the resonance project foundation and uh, the Hawaii Institute for Unify, Unify physics where he leads a team of physicists electrical engineer mathematician and other scientists to explore the frontier of unification uh, principle and I was very amazed, you know, when I, I look at you, uh, some information that is online. So, uh, you know, you predict uh, many events. And I, when I'm looking at the story of Einstein, you know, he has this uh, story where, so, uh, you know, uh, Eiderberg, Eiderberg, yes. uh, who, uh, you know, done one prediction and the whole world was excited. Right. And, and in your itinerary, you know, more than 80 predictions. Yes. And, and now it, it brought me to speak about, you know, the last one, which is a major, major uh, discovery. You publish a paper. Yes. Uh, 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 predicting the mass of the, of the proton. Mm -hmm. And uh, what also, also impressed me, and you know, one day I was listening at, uh, online and uh, you were saying, it's not about trying to find the smallest tiny particle, it's about to look at the pattern right. of information. Right. And it's so true, you know, even in, in healing, you know, when we look at all an individual, mm -hmm. it, it's, and, 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 and more you look from this uh, holistic point of view, you have to gather some more information, but you have also to to, to organize in, in a fractal way. So right, look so, at the pattern. Of the so interview. we have probably something in common mm -hmm. there. No but uh, let me, uh, I'd like you you speak more about uh, this article you wrote, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's very important. It, it's, it's also a, a cornerstone, how to explain universe, right. how this work, yeah, the mechanic, and I'd like you comment about that. Yeah, it was really exciting. Mm -hmm. I, first of all, thank you for having me. That's and my <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was really exciting, you know, after all these years of researching and, you know, trying to find some of these fundamental equations, I had found, like, some of the patterns early on and, you know, trying to express them in mathematics. And, you know, when you write the mathematics, uh, it, it starts to lead you and, and, and you know, you, you go down these roads and, and some ends in you know, in dead ends, and, mm -hmm. and then some, you know, continue on. And, and when I got to that point where it kind of unfolded like a flower, and it was so simple, it was so easy, it was so clear, um, it just blew my mind. You mm -hmm. know, after some 25 years of doing such complex mathematics and physics and all this, for it to, like, unfold into this so simple uh, geometric pattern, uh, which gives 
very very precise result for the mass the proton as you mentioned and for the strong force and and for the radius of the proton which is really important uh, to under because the proton is a fundamental particle from which all matter in the universe is generated mm -hmm. and so uh, the measurement of the radius of the proton has been a big difficulty for many years it's 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 extremely small you're talking in the, in in the 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 very 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 tiny particle 10 to minus 13 centimeters it's it's extremely hard to measure this is, this is very small yeah and so it, it was a big issue for a long time to try to get a really precise measurement of that radius and from the theoretical uh, mathematics i wrote all of a sudden it came out and it was very very precisely close to the latest measurement that was done in 2010 at the time mm -hmm. and so I included that in my paper that it, it was inside the margin of error of the actual best experiment we had at the time and uh, I published a paper and within a few months a new measurement was done in an accelerator in mm -hmm. Switzerland and it was more precise than the 2010 measurement mm -hmm. and sure enough I was you know, inside the margin of error of that experiment as well, and uh, even closer to the value that had been found. So, so, so the, people have to understand that. This is very important. It's like you come with your model of understanding and your maths and, mm -hmm. and calculation, and you come with a number regarding the mass which is more precise Mm -hmm. Then you and know the, our, uh, their, their, the, the experiment and, and what physicists uh, come with their their own uh, perspective. Right, actually, the standard model is like some four percent off, mm -hmm. and although four percent doesn't seem like much, many articles have come out in the more popular press showing this uh, radius of the proton is a big problem in quantum physics mm -hmm. right now, and so what's exciting. I mean, the prediction was, was an amazing thing for it to happen so quickly and be confirmed so quickly. Mm -hmm. But what's exciting is that what does it mean, you know? Like, what does the theory say? If the theory is correct, what does it mean? And, and, and in like a very overarching idea of the theory, is what it means is that everything is connected through this field of information that is at the base of quantum theory, like below subatomic particle, below everything, there's this field of information that we call vacuum fluctuations mm -hmm. um, that's occurring at the Planck level, which is super tiny, mm -hmm. and is these little oscillators, and they're present everywhere in high density, everywhere in the space between us, the space between atoms, between molecules. And they are the relationship of these field of information is what produces the mass that we see as the reality we see all around us. And, and you come to that conclusion, eliminating the, the strong force, right? Right. That, that's the... Yeah, that's the crunch. <laughs> the crunch yeah. of the whole thing. Yes. And to eliminate the, the, the strong force, then you, you design a model where gravity and uh, electromagnetic field... Uh, are enough, but then That's it's right. like the the proton has to be a kind of type of a black hole or something. Do you That's want to explain right. that? It, yeah, it actually, you know, the solution when I was writing it, um, it uh, first uh, I applied it to black holes, cosmological black holes. So mm -hmm. instead of um, Einstein described gravity as this this um, surface of space time curving, like if you were to put a ball on uh, the surface of a trampoline, yeah, it would curve the trampoline, yeah. and any other ball would like feel attracted mm -hmm. because of the curvature of space time. Yeah, this graphic is very uh, known. common, it's kind yeah. of a classic one, right? And what and so you could think of this curvature as like the surface of water when you pull the plug in your bath, yeah, and you know, like the rubber ducky you have in your bath. I don't know if you have one anymore, but. I know, you know exactly what you're speaking about. Yes. It, so it, you give a talk to that. Yeah. Right? And then the, the rubber ducky starts going towards the drain, exactly. right? Exactly. And so that curvature is what Einstein described. What I came to describe is that that the field of space time, like would be the water in the tub, is made out of little particles, you know, like the water particles in mm -hmm. the case of the tub. Mm -hmm. And I 
calculated the water part or the little particles, the little plunk fluctuations of mm -hmm. that field mm -hmm. and it give me the exact same answer so it's like Einstein described the curvature but this new idea describes all the little particle that makes the vortex mm -hmm. so it's the more fundamental structure of space-time how why space-time is curving that emerge and it's curving because there's spin and this gradient density uh, just like when you pull the plug in your tub. And when you do that, all of a sudden, um, when I calculate it... And this it, is what we see on the screen now. This right. kind of torque and This and kind spin. of torque yeah. and spin in the structure of space-time, just like water going down the drain. Mm -hmm. And when I calculated that, it gave the exact solution for gravity, like just as Einstein field equations. But in this case, built on simple fluctuations of the vacuum structure at the quantum level. So, so this, is a, this is a new thing. It's gravity described with quantum objects, right? This Absolutely. Is, this is the bridge that, that Einstein was looking for, that we've been looking for for 100 years, is that bridge between gravity at the cosmological level and quantum theory. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, I thought, wow, this could be quantum gravity. So then I applied it at the quantum level of mm -hmm. the proton, the subatomic particle, and it worked out. It came out just right for the mass of the proton, and then I was able to predict the radius of the proton. And then when I calculated the gravity of such an object with that theory, I ended up with the exact force that we call the strong force, that force that holds the protons together in the nuclear of an atom. And... Um, and I realized, wow, the strong force could be just gravity at mm -hmm. the quantum level mm -hmm. due to these little fluctuations of the vacuum that are everywhere. And it came out just right. Not only did it come out just right, when I calculated the spin of that force, mm -hmm. it gave the exact range that we measure the strong force to be between two protons in the nuclear of an atom. So that all of a sudden simplifies all the model of quantum theory and relativistic relationship to quantum theory to very fundamental level of this vacuum energy, this field of information mm -hmm. that's permeating everything and that mass emerged from and gravity and electromagnetic fields. But sometimes simplifying is not... Uh <laughs> <laughs> this is not what is the most comfortable for everybody. But That's right. Th wh what I like you speak about is about, you know, bec we have all this uh, idea of, of the quantum and probability and intention and inanate intelligence. Mm -hmm. But what the, you, the way you carry on this concept is, is that the information now resides at the core of this talk, right? That's Can right. we say that? Absolutely. And uh, basically everything is talking. And, and maybe we should bring some, uh, the slide uh, for that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Mark? Some of the slides of... Um, that showing showing the, the protons and the torque and, and the, uh, the infrastructure. Yeah, for sure. We can look yeah. at it. You know, the, the way the equations were written, it's really remarkable. Actually, if we get the the one on the proton where you can see the little fluctuations of the... Yeah, there it is. Okay. And, um, you know, you don't have to worry about the equations too much. Basically, those are actually very simple equations. They just describe the surface to volume ratio. And so, basically, I, I pixelated... I, they're voxel, actually, mm -hmm. because they're 3D to have volume. But you can think of it as little pixels. I pixelated the surface and the inside, mm -hmm. the volume of the object, uh, and, and found how many there is on the surface and how many there is inside, and what is their energy value. So you, you could think of it as like if you have these vacuum fluctuations in everywhere, and basically the proton is an, a knot in the vacuum. It's like a little focus point, a little vortex mm -hmm. in the vacuum in that region, mm -hmm. all we can say about the proton is that there's a charge there. We know it's not like a billiard ball, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it, it's a charge in the vacuum. Mm -hmm. So then I calculate how much energy there is in that charge in mm -hmm. terms of the, these Planck vacuum oscillators. Mm -hmm. And it 
turned out that it was exactly the mass of the universe or the mass of all the other protons in the universe was wow. present you know in terms of information mm -hmm. in one proton and then that you know like really talked to me of the holographic nature of reality where mm -hmm. yeah good where information is is but imagine all this information present inside the proton in terms of the vacuum but the surface limits how much the information can move across that boundary it's like a bog rate. Mm -hmm. So then I did the ratio between the surface and the inside mm -hmm. in terms of information, and I got the exact gravitational solution from that. Wow. And it was just remarkable. And, and now I see two things here. First is this, uh, uh, you know, uh, geometry, yes. you know, that we see there. And I think, uh, you know, uh, it's pretty amazing because that geometry link with the the, the tetrahedron kind structure. of structure. The, absolutely. So, uh, is it explained, because we, sometimes we speak about non-locality, you know, f mm -hmm. information. We had an experiment then a few times ago uh, online, you know, and we, are we were speaking about, you know, uh, intention that is carried on in non-locality. Right. So, now we can think that this uh, geometry, mm -hmm. organization inside the, is, is the carrier of the uh, information exactly and now it makes sense how like really esoteric things um that occurs like that seem magical that seem impossible like remote viewing or you know remote healing all these things mm -hmm. you can start to see oh this could be the mechanism how this is possible if all the information of all other things in the universe is present in each proton mm -hmm. and you had access to that because you're made out of protons right then you could remote view you could you could have the information of something that's on the other side of the world that you're not you know able to see with your own eyes or mm -hmm. but if you access that information you could you could do that and, mm -hmm. and starts to make things that seems really esoteric and really impossible now you start to see the possibility of it and and as well things in quantum theory that didn't make so much sense neither like entanglement you know spooky action at a distance i einstein exactly. called it yeah yeah like why does a particle here when i change its state this other particle over there changes at the exact same time well, because all these protons are connect interconnect together. and they're interconnect interconnected nothing is ever isolated from anything else Absolutely. because this field is connecting everything together so in other words we have now in some way the mechanic of mm -hmm. what previously we call let's say non-locality or mm -hmm. inanate intelligence and i like to bring here now this uh, uh, this slide about the uh, cell division, which is another challenge in biology, right? In that we try to explain to toward the the morphogenetic field. I don't know if you mm -hmm. can, yeah, this one here, right? That we can we try to explain to the uh, the morphogenetic field or some or concept of epigenetic, right? But you come with someone something which is a little bit step further, mm -hmm. where you know the, even through this cell division, you were able to show this uh, fractal organization yeah, this of the life. Yeah, that's right. This fractal division of the geometry. Now you find it, you know, this was at the quantum level, mm -hmm. right? It actually, it was at the Planck scale, which, you know, what we were looking about. Very um, small. Very small. <laughs> very small. Because imagine for all the Planck's mm -hmm. inside one proton mm -hmm. to have the mass of the universe you gotta imagine how small these bits of information are it's 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 incredible if you know just to give you an example if you were to grow a proton uh, a, a plonk mm -hmm. right so that it would be the size of a proton so that just for people to imagine the size of a proton you're made out of about a hundred trillion cells uh, each cell is made of about a hundred trillion atoms oh, wow. and so you know, and the proton is a teeny thing in the middle of one atom, so mm -hmm. already like it's small, right? The proton is really small. But imagine that you grew a little plonk, which is the fluctuation of the vacuum thing, and you grew it to a proton, then all of a sudden the proton would be from here to Alpha Centauri, 
right? Mm -hmm. From the sun to Alpha Centauri would be the radius of a proton. So that's a difference in scale, right? So then, but when you go from the proton up to the biology, then you can see that same division of the structure of space occurring at the bi biological level, the way cell divides as we were looking at them. And you know, the solution at the at the proton level is only true if the if you if you look at the geometry of the Planck mm -hmm. doing that very specific pattern if it, if you put it in other patterns the solution is wrong it's only true if if the fluctuations of the little Planck are space filling so that each waveform has to overlap each other mm -hmm. and create this flower of life kind of structure and so, and you find it the way the cells divide and you find it, you know, everywhere in nature, the way biology self-organize. And this is a big problem that we're trying to solve for all these oh, years as it, well. Absolutely. It's like, you know, here we have, uh, yeah, it's kind of layout, some principle of quantum physics in biology. Mm -hmm. Now you do the step further where you add this fractal information. Yeah. At the core of uh, every uh, proton. Right, because it current quantum theory and relativistic equation don't have biology in it. No, absolutely. Not, yeah. <laughs> we have to stretch. There. Right, because it doesn't predict the organization we see in biology. In exactly. fact, it predicts the exact contrary. It should not happen. It's mm -hmm. The fact that even one blade of grass with all the bacterial life and all the DNA in there exists after only 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang mm -hmm. is a remarkable thing. If you do the statistics of that, it's very, very improbable that this could even happen, you know? So there must be a mechanism that has this fundamental self-organizing structure, you know? And in order for things to self-organize, they have to have some kind of feedback. Right, and that is what I was when I was when I found the proton mass. You know the the fluctuation of the vacuum inside the proton mass, and then the the bog rate of this information going through the surface, mm -hmm. right, and then going to the um, the uh, the the vacuum. So the information is moving from the inside of the va of the proton through mm -hmm. the surface, through the va back to the vacuum, mm -hmm. and, the, and the vacuum is moving back into the proton. Mm -hmm. And the equations show this relationship. And so there is an exchange of information between what's inside and what's outside. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit like our experience every day. We, you know, interpret what we see outside of us. Mm -hmm. We, you know, make an interpretation that dictates our actions, like mm -hmm. a cup is there, so we want to grab the cup. And then the universe feeds us back, mm -hmm. you know, the experience of our interpretation and mm -hmm. so on in this continuous feedback. So if there is such a feedback at the fundamental level of creation of, of this field, then that is what can create that self-organizing geometric fractal structure that we see everywhere and, and eventually in biology and even a human being emerge, emerge from it. Yeah, I like we bring this uh, picture where we have the double uh, torus. Can yes. we see that this in some way express what you just said, right? Yeah, exactly. Because we can see, okay, here, this is pretty good here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this kind of movement inside, this is what you're saying. So in, again, then, then the energy move outside, which is, right. you, you call the uh, or, uh, horizon, horizon. The event horizon. Event yeah. horizon. Yeah. So when you are within, it's like, you know, this is where is the core of information. The feedback is when you have all this movement in and out, right? That's right. Can we, we can visualize this way? Absolutely. Yeah. And can we see the proton with this, this model? Absolutely, because the geometry I'm talking about is not static. Mm -hmm. It's dynamic. Okay. It has spin in it. And when it spins, this tetrahedron structure, when it spins, it produces a movement outside and a movement inside, which produces this toroidal field. 
And this uh, fundamental torus allows information to go from the inside to the outside, back into the inside. So it's a constant feedback loop of information. So the system actually learns about itself. It's, it's evolving. So, and we can also picture the universe the same thing. The same it's way. It's like you have this, the pro, this minus little protons. Yes which we call a black hole, right? And right. the whole universe mm -hmm. I is also, you know, shaping yeah. this one. Instead, we see this kind of model where you have a, a big bang and everything is going apart and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, uh, and then should be imploding. But they, don't, they didn't figure out this, this kind of organization. That's right. There's more and more evidence that, like in background um, uh, mapping of the universe, that the universe may be a torus. And that means that it can have expansion and contraction, and contraction. At, at the same time. Absolutely. And, um, and so that it's a metastable universe in which there's, ma there's matter production. I think that it's really interesting that just recently they found one of the last papers of Einstein, a paper that hadn't, had been overlooked, mm -hmm. that he had published about the year, uh, and in this paper he was, um, he was theorizing a universe that that's um, that's um, that's constantly producing matter mm -hmm. and expelling matter, so that it's constant dynamic flow between creation and expansion. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it's really interesting because it kind of matched nicely with some of um, the evidence that are coming out at this point. And you know the way he wrote the mathematics was problematic, but if it was taken and rewritten with what we know today, mm -hmm. I think there's a really, really good chance that that model is, is more accurate, that they, the idea that the universe just did one bang and that's mm -hmm. it, you know, um, that it's a continuous creation model instead of just one creation uh, dynamic. You know, the other thing is that from this new view, creation of matter is not some miracle that happened 13.7 billion years ago in the Big Bang, mm -hmm. right? Which is not explained by the standard model, like where did the matter come from? Where did mm -hmm. the energy come from? Mm -hmm. Now we start to see, wow, there's this field of information that's the source of matter creation. And then the source of the organizing principle that eventually produced biology and that eventually produce even consciousness because it, basically our brain is this network of information as well, you know, in our body and so on that's communicating and self-organizing. And, and, it, and, and it's based on feedback, right? Mm -hmm. And so self-awareness is a feedback structure. So this is where fit mind and consciousness in your, in your model. Absolutely. Yeah. So that you can not only unify cosmological physics with quantum theory, but you can unify biology and consciousness study and all this because it starts to come together in a whole view a holistic view and this is why I called it black holes w-h-o-l-e because it, it's not uh, isolated it's it's not a hole that's isolated from the rest it's actually mm -hmm. connected to the whole thing exactly yeah and it, it brings together also uh, which is there to me old ancient system of healing and I don't know if we, we can bring this slide uh, Alexi you know that we prepare yeah Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there is, you know, if we, if we look in the history, you have all these fractals, you know, if you sp think in terms of uh, uh, Taoist medicine with the, the chi, uh, yeah, Ayurvedic medicine, the prana, even natural medicine, they are spe speaking about vital force and they still, you know, uh, the materialistic model of science cannot have a grasp on that. Mm -hmm. And of course, we start to st now to extrapolate with some principle of quantum physics. But, you know, many of this uh, science uh, stay a mystery. A and, then, and then with your system, because now you add this fractal organization, we start to understand how work. Let's take, take an example, you know, the, the acupuncture class we have in the program that uh, relate with uh, Taoist medicine, the I Ching, uh, and the organization. You know, we, we, you can, you have some, some uh, uh, you know, your model can also bridge with this kind of understanding, you know, where we, uh, we have the, 
the, this model of Yi Chain. And I don't know if we can play uh, the video, Alexei, where, uh, you know. So there's the Yi Chain. The Yi Chain. And then you have this model here where you have, uh, you if know. You take each lines of the Yi Chain, of the symbols of the Yi Chain, and you, you match the opposite symbol of the Yi Chains together, you get. In 3D, you get a star tetrahedron structure, which is the base of this um, foundation for the geometry of space-time that I describe at the Planck level in my, in my paper. So it's really remarkable that that was present, you know, thousands and thousands of years thousands ago. Thousands years ago, and, and, the, and this ancient model of healing w had probably to do with this kind of information, too. Exactly. That this is the thing. Yeah, yeah because the Yi Ching, for instance, it was pretty complete, because the Yi Ching, for instance, was always associated with the yin and yang. And if you look at the yin and yang, now you have the the twisting, the spinning. Yeah, we, we have this one, too, here. Yeah, there yeah, you that, go. This is very interesting. Yes. So I realized that when you look at the, the yin and yang symbol, the black dot is in the white and the white dot is in the black. So it's, mm -hmm. it's counter-polarized. So I was thinking, how can the black get to the white and the white get to the black? And the only way you could do it is if it's connected through a wormhole, you know, a torus structure. And so that each one has access to the other through the polarity of the field of a torus in 3D. And then when you, when you put it together, you end up with the, the yin yang. This you know? is very fascinating. Yeah. And, and, and we have in Taoist medicine what Marguerite de Surani called the atomic heart. Mm -hmm. And is also, I think, kind of an inspiration of the Yi Ching and how this Yi Ching spread. First in two here, we have the, the atomic heart. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they divide in eight and then in... Uh, 12 meridian, 64 I e, uh, e chain. Oh, wow. And at that time, you know, the, the, the idea was also to find imbalance. Mm -hmm. Imbalance related with some behavior or some kind mm -hmm. of emotion. Mm -hmm. So I believe in that time they, they had probably some way to translate fractals in, in behavior, maybe. I mm -hmm. don't know what you think about that. This is kind of a stretch here, but, you yeah. know, this comes from somewhere, this science. Right, yeah. absolutely, because, you know, if we're made of this fundamental field and it's permeating everything, then, you know, instinctively, we'd eventually, throughout civilization, we'd start seeing it emerge in our traditions and all this stuff, and so I think people through meditation, you know, which is going inward towards the center of our existence and so on, may have been able to access this field and learn to manipulate it, you know, in healing modalities all around the world. And, I mean, many ancient civilizations talked about the prana or mana in Hawaii. Mana in Hawaii, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and the chi and all this stuff. And I think um, the you know when you look at the proton, for mm -hmm. instance, it's the most stable. I mean, it, no proton has ever been seen to to decay. I mean, we we collide these things, we do all this stuff to them, and they stay extremely stable because they have this relationship between the inside and the outside that's in a metastable state. Mm -hmm. So you know, if we were to philosophically apply that to the biology, mm -hmm. when that stability is upset, mm -hmm. right, when there's an imbalance, mm -hmm. then there probably is a breakdown in the information between cells. I think that would be a possibility for yeah, like absolutely. the source of disease, you know, and, and other things. Yeah, and like um, mental illness and all this. So the, you know, that this, this sense of isolation, mm -hmm. whether it's a cell, you know, that's no longer able to communicate properly, With the other, yeah. or, or, or a being that feels isolated, disconnected from their peers, and so on, mm -hmm. you know, despair, all these things, me, you know, you could, you could almost link it back, it is a stretch, but you can almost link it back to this mm -hmm. fundamental pattern, and if you... And, and if you can bring that to the people, if, if people understand it and all of a sudden can visualize it and use it in their practice, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it may be possible. And as well, I mean, this incredible application to technology. Yeah, this is, I'm already uh, looking at this, you know, <laughs> what you came with. Because, you know, it's, 
there is a sequence here. First, we have to come what we call, you know, the theoretical science, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have to come with the applicable the application, application of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and application will come out of that, of course. It's Absolutely, not yeah. And so again, you know, it's like here, proton become kind of the, the, the cornerstone mm -hmm. of all this, what you call unified field theory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, it's kind of a big task, right? It is a big task. Because, you know, how many people want to bring all this together? Even Einstein, you know, yeah. he, he, he died and uh, he, he could not have made it. And yeah, he was writing equations hour, hours before he died. He was still trying. Uh, I, can, I can be sure. And, yeah. and, and now you come with this unified feel and the, cor the proton is at like the, the cornerstone of that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, and then we can incorporate so many uh, of these ancient systems of healing too. Mm -hmm. So again, can you brush the whole picture again? How, you know, wh what do you mean by unified field? You know that you. Right. So uh, technically, unified field theory in physics is specifically to unify the forces between the cosmological side of our equations, which is Einstein field equations which include gravity and, you know, as well, electromagnetic fields and so on, and, and the quantum fields, right? So mm -hmm. the strong force and the weak force and so on, and to, like, put them together. But I think there's a deeper meaning to unified field, and um, some people call it, um, you know, uh, uh, theory of everything and so on. But I think that it's, it's a unified view, a holistic view, Mm -hmm. of the dynamics, I mean holistic in terms of whole, you know, um, view of the dynamics of, of, of creation from the creation of matter mm -hmm. to the self-organizing systems of biology and then the emergence of in that complexity, like when the complexity get, when the complexity get high enough, when there's enough you know, information dynamics going mm -hmm. on to what we call, you know, consciousness of self-awareness, the system mm -hmm. becoming aware of itself mm -hmm. and becoming able to, like, experience and examine its own existence. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, it's emerging in many different ways. Uh, it, it's been a huge task, and uh, you can imagine I get a lot of tomatoes thrown at me. You know, oh, <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. Yeah. But, uh, but you've done your homework, at least from what I see. You yeah. know, it's not just uh, coming with an idea here. You yes. know, you, you, come, you, you, you come with the explanation that goes with it. Yeah, and this last prediction is really supporting the concepts are correct, you know, and so it's, it's exciting. But I, what is important is that like when you look at this I mean what you get from it is a deeper sense of self you know a, a deeper sense of 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 how you were created and and what is your relationship to the to the rest of the universe and to the whole and when you when you realize that there's all sorts of applications in your life, in mm -hmm. your daily life, that are really important, you know, when you, when you think of that table and that chair and the wall behind us and all this stuff, mm -hmm. you, all of a sudden you realize, wait, there's this field that connects me to all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, in the, I'm in constant interaction with all that, and I can manipulate it because I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. So now it starts to explain as well why the observation of a system seems to change it, which is something that was discovered in quantum theory early on. Yeah, the observer, yeah, no, effect. it's part of the experiment, the observer effect, you yes, know. Yes, that's right. The way you look at things. The way you, well, So, in a, some way, with what you found is, you know, add a twist to that, right? It's exactly. like, you know, it's exactly what we were thinking. Right. But there is something else even deeper, you exactly. know. Can, can we say that through this idea of the proton, gathering all the information, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, even... Can we say that? Yeah, because, okay. you know, even other... Uh, that's where I was getting at earlier, is that even other scientists are coming to conclude to things similar to it, like, uh, like there's a very famous physicist that just wrote an uh, equation in a paper showing that entanglement at the quantum level mm -hmm. is actually the result of wormholes connecting the particles at a distance. But wormholes 
are classical object, meaning they're from Einstein field equations, mm -hmm. right? So and they're part of black hole theory and 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 we and Wheeler, uh, another famous physicist that worked with Einstein, had come to conclude that this vacuum energy fluctuation of the quantum world mm -hmm. was actually wormholes everywhere connecting everything, and so this um, connectivity between all the things. Um, you know, it starts to make you understand that, like, you are part of this incredible dynamic, mm -hmm. you know, this will work of nature, that you have an influence on it because you are feeding it information. So, so then the double slit experiment, mm -hmm. which in the Copenhagen interpretation generated basically the basis of quantum mechanics we see today in quantum field theory Absolutely. as well eventually but this this uh, interpretation that uh, the particles seem to be a particle and a wave at the same time and and it could go through the two slits and interfere with itself and all this stuff it starts to change all, all of a sudden instead of this double slit experiment becoming mm -hmm. like some kind of magical thing that happens that you can't visualize that you know you shouldn't try to visualize it's just the way it is you should just write the math for mm -hmm. it and forget it mm -hmm. you know um you know and the fact that when there's when there's a measurement made it changes the result of the experiment mm -hmm. um all that seem it's it's like floating in the air in quantum mechanics meaning it's 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 like quantum magic it's quantum weirdness commonly uh, uh, thought of <coughs> well when you think about it in the terms of what I, we're discussing now in this new view it makes sense for instance when the particle moves it's not moving in the free field it, it's 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 actually moving in a field and as it moves it makes waves so the waves go through one slit and the particle goes through the other and you get all this stuff happening mm -hmm. that you see in the experiment mm -hmm. but actually it's just because the the particle is not is interacting with the field mm -hmm. and actually is made of that field and so if you put an observer there if you put something to measure it well that thing is m influencing the field too so it's going to influence the result of your experiment and so that starts to make sense in a mechanical way, meaning that you understand. Mechanical doesn't mean it's boring and it's like gears and stuff. It means that like you understand the fundamental parts that makes that how, thing how this work. happen. Yeah, exactly how, how this works. Yeah, and, and, and probably the mistake was to think you know particles are, are just little balls. Mm -hmm, that's right. And waves are just little waves. That's right. No, you come with a model where no, it's not little balls. Mm -hmm. These are torus of information moving around. Right. In a field and, of and, information. and then wave are not just this, you know, two dimension type of thing, but mm -hmm. now you, you, you give a three dimensional way to look at waves. Right. So it's in other words, you know, it's kind of yeah, we had you know, I, I felt good when I heard about quantum physics because everybody that were a little bit weird you know, and, and thought about non-locality and this and that, you know, we felt good because, ah, oh, finally, maybe I have a way to explain it. Right. Now, we get a little bit disappointed because mm -hmm. it's not what we, th we thought, mm -hmm. but it's even better when you start to look uh, from this angle. Yeah, you start... Because you can, you can, you get another layer of information, right. which is about a more dynamic world. Right. And which we, you interact with, but, you know, you can explain it. That's right. You but can at the end of the day, you said, here, I have an, an explanation, how it works. Yeah. And you can even prove it to a student or a person because, like, for instance, I've been saying this for a long time about the do double slit experiment, but I didn't necessarily have the equipment and, or the whereabouts to, a to actually do the experiment. Mm -hmm. But MIT did, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, uh, and the scientists in France as well. And... You know, they took a little back of silicone liquid and they put little silicone balls on it and then they put the two slits and then they, they fired these little silicone balls that walk on, this, on the silicone and make waves and all this. And mm -hmm. they got all the same result mm -hmm. as the double slit experiment with fluid dynamics, mm -hmm. you know. And so it is very supportive of what I just talked about. 
because we're talking about a little particle in a field that acts like a fluid, that acts you know, like the water in your tub when you pull the plug. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, you brought out a slide or so that you like to share? I don't know if we, we can come back to that. E yeah, I think I brought to, this. To because the visual help people to understand these, these concepts. These concepts, you know, yeah. Tomorrow, this morning, you know, we really, uh, I would say, pushing boundaries a little bit more. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, because maybe some uh, uh, our listener and our views to what you explained, but some come, you know, for a more, let's say, a more classical quantum physics point of view. Right, I understand, absolutely. And, you know, if you if you talk to physicists, quantum physicists that are honest about quantum theory, they'll tell you it's incomplete. You know, it, most physicists will agree to that, and I think that this is maybe the first baby steps in completing the theory. Mm -hmm. And when we do, it's no longer just quantum theory; it's actually the whole thing, meaning it's quantum theory and relativistic equation put together, so that you can take the theory and apply it to a black hole in the universe. Mm -hmm. And it works, and then you can apply it to a subatomic particles, and it mm -hmm. works. And so it's really kind of able to like bridge, or you could apply it to the biological resolution, mm -hmm. the fractal level of biology, and it works too. And you, the, the, the same principle are, you know, reproduced from one end to the other, and why not? I mean, there's no reason that there would be an interruption or a discontinuity anywhere in the universe. Exactly. It must be the same mechanics that function at all levels. And that's why Einstein was saying, you know, we have to figure out a way to connect quantum theory with relativistic equations. Yeah, he, he didn't like it at the beginning. No, he didn't. I don't think, yeah. yeah. This is what Although he was one of the, star, uh, the person that started quantum theory, he didn't believe the universe was a result of some random fluctuation with no heads of tails, you know, his famous statement, I, I'll never believe that, the, that God is playing dice, you know, like that it's all random and, um, you know, and this is, this fundamental structure, he even made statement that when a unified field would be found, it probably would be fairly simple. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the criticism I get from my peers is that it's too simple. Um, it's too simple and you get rid of uh, the strong and the weak force. Right, right. This is, uh, you know, uh, yeah. taking out of the park some toys they were playing with yeah. it. So. Sacrilege. <laughs> so, um, and, and, and as well, he, he said that it would probably be a simple or an elegant algebraic geometric solution. And, and that's exactly what was found. So, um, I think that, it, it, you know, it has some merit. Yeah, and he said something too that uh, has made me smile. You know, when they, uh, they, he, they prove that his theory was working, one uh, journalist asked, you know, and what's happened if it, it will not have been proven? Mm -hmm. He said, it cannot be possible because it's too beautiful. That's right. <laughs> it's too beautiful. <laughs> it and is that theory cannot, has to work because this is, it's it's, and it's you said you are, you are saying the same thing. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, imagine that. I get gravity from the surface to volume ratio of little fluctuating vacuum entities. You know, they, it's a simple equation. It's just basically a ratio between the, uh, the number of, of oscillators on the surface. Mm -hmm. So imagine the surface oscillating and the number of oscillators on the inside. And then I multiply it by the Planck mass, which is the mass of one of the oscillator. And you get the exact gravitational. Theory. So uh, what is... But at the end, what generate all that spin and all this gravity in... in, in uh, yeah, that's a good question. So where this, where this come from? Right, um, well, you know... Where's the source? Right, <laughs> what is the source? <laughs> yes, well, that's a big question. Well, you know, just like when you pull the plug in your tub, you yeah. create a gradient. Yeah. Because there's a change of density between the air in the drain Mm -hmm. and the water. So mm -hmm. the water goes down and yeah. the air comes up, right? Okay. Um, you, they, when you look, so... So, so who pulled the plug? <laughs> <laughs> well... One it, day you ask, who is the other side of the balloon, right? You, when you blow the balloon, yeah, well, now who, who, who pulled the plug? Who pulled the plug? <laughs> 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 well, if you... 
So maybe it was always full, meaning <laughs> it's an infinite plug. Uh, but, um, you know, if you have... Um, so the density of this energy, the vacuum at the quantum level is really, really high. Uh, it's like 10 to the 93 grams per centimeter cube. That, oh, that, boy. Yeah, it's more energy in a centimeter cube of space than if I put the whole universe... Yeah, can, it, we have some slides on that. Slide I like, to, I like I we go there. The can can we come back to the PowerPoint where we see the density, uh, uh, this cube, the, you know, where you pack all these... Uh, these little plonks in it. Yeah. So here you see that, like, uh, the cube on the right there with the little blue balls, okay. each one is representing a plonk. Obviously, it's not the right scale, right? The plonk is teeny. But um, they all have approximately 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, in radius and you know they so in other words if we if we pack a centimeter cube with the smallest entities in entity yeah, that, that has been calculated approximate yeah calculate. from the electromagnetic field it's the smallest vibration of the electromagnetic field that's possible okay right? the yeah. smallest photon uh, if you pack a centimeter cube full of these things, mm -hmm. each one is a little energy so it has a mass right mm -hmm. e equals mc squared has a mass of 10 to the minus 5 grams and you calculate how much mass energy of little plonks there is in a centimeter cube, you get 10 to the 93 grams per centimeter cube. And if you did the same thing with all the stars in the universe, all the galaxy, everything we see in the universe, and you stuffed it into a centimeter cube of space, you'd get 10 to the 55 grams per not centimeter Not even cube. half of that. Right? Oh, no, not, not even close. You're 39 yeah. orders of magnitude off. Oh, you boy. know, so, so that is like, um, it is a huge difference because when it's exponential, right? Mm -hmm. When you add zeros, it, it gets bigger much faster. So, oh, yeah. So you can imagine that the vacuum density at the Planck level is, at, 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 at the quantum level, is really, really highly dense, but at the universal level. So if I take a proton with all that energy in it and I grow it to the size of the universe, mm -hmm. I get the exact vacuum energy we measure in the universe in the universe we call it dark energy um that that we see in our universe and that's 10 to the minus 30s yeah and we have range. another graph with that the curve where we have a graphic you know where we right. see the protons and the, and then you have the smallest unit and that's right maybe it's next can you move the, the, the uh, slide Alexi? i don't know if i had this in the presentation but you might have pulled it independently from the net but in any case, um, no, not not that one. It was a graph um, showing the different masses in the universe. Okay, you can stay there, Alex. We'll, we'll speak about that after. Um, yeah, but you know, it's like here you have the, the the whole universe. You have the smallest units, and then the proton is like at the middle of the of the chart, right? Right. It's exactly. It's in the middle of the chart, and it um, and when you do the proton with my equation it's it lines up with all the things in the exactly. universe exactly and when you do because it because they done some kind of normalization and then they know the proton was all out of scale well yeah because they didn't calculate the energy it takes to do the strong force so if you take just the mass of the proton and you don't calculate the energy it takes for that proton to produce the strong force mm -hmm. then you get the wrong idea about the energy of the proton and, and because they just threw in the f strong force without saying where the energy came from, they have that deficiency. And so I, I repaired that using this holographic view, this geometric view. But um, I think we, we were, so you were asking, where is that call? Yeah. Why is it all spinning? Like, uh -huh. how is it, who pulled the plug? Well, you know, the density change between the universal size energy level of the vacuum mm -hmm. to the Planck size is huge. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is like driving this spin, you know, because the, the plug is perpetually pulled. Yeah. So everything is continuously spinning like the snake chasing its tail, you know, trying to resolve this change in density. So you could imagine our universe is in a larger one, that's in a larger one, and all these have different density vacuum oh structure. And so, so the Planck pixel I'm using is mm -hmm. only true for the scale of universe we're in today. You see? That, that in a larger universe, that Planck pixel might be much bigger mm -hmm. for that universe. You see what I'm saying? I mean, for that universe, our universe might be the pixel. 
<laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So, so there's a constant change in this infinite fractal structure mm -hmm. of density gradient that's driving the whole information network. <laughs> and so, so it's very, it's some, I, you know, I can't figure out what you're speaking about, but the, to imagine the, you know, when you speak of this degree of mass or degree of this, it's very hard for the mind to just fig uh, figure this out. I, it's almost I know. impossible. It, it, it's, it takes some gymnastic of the mind. Yeah. I've, I've been going at it for 30 years or 25 <laughs> years, so I, I'm kind of used to it. I forget how, you know, it can be a little difficult. It can hurt a little bit, but it's only temporary. Yeah, a little headache, right? <laughs> and, and now we see the, the fractal yes. inside structure. Yeah, a and then and then I thought I think you, through your exploration you find uh, you find these uh, fractal structure in in, uh, in uh, galactic structures and uh, you know supernova supernova. But I mean, you you let's say the flower the the what is the name of this one? You, you find this on temp temple and all this. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah, a yeah, link right. with ancient civilization. Oh, too. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The ancient civilization had this type of geometry everywhere in their temple, in their text. Even Da Vinci was drawing it everywhere. Um, you know, you can see here on the yeah. food dog and and the food dog in. Um, in their, these traditions was considered the guardian of knowledge. Mm -hmm. and the knowledge that the food and dog was guarding was under his paw, right? He was guarding the knowledge. And so, and you look under the paw and what do you have? You have a sphere with these, you know, pixelation structure right on the sphere, like, which is the exact solution to gravity that I found. I mean, it's remarkable. And this stuff is thousands and thousands of years old. So, so maybe they were trying to tell us something really, really deep about the structure of, of creation because they didn't think of these as nice artwork. They thought of this as very sacred art, very important. You know, they were the basis of their teaching about the structure of the universe and how things work. And maybe they were right because the math comes out right for it when you use this kind of geometry. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. And you know, when these guys talked about even in those traditions, especially in the Chinese tradition and so on, and in the Taoist tradition and all this, when they talk about influencing the qi, you know, working with the qi and influencing the qi and all this for healing purposes or, um, you know, in, uh, in martial art and all this stuff, they, they do incredible things, things that you don't think is possible, you know, that have been documented. Um, maybe if you're able to visualize the geometry and you, if you're able to like get in this zone space, yeah. in, in this space where you're connected, where you feel the connection, right? Maybe you can influence it and make things happen that you wouldn't think would be possible in, in other cases, you know? Um, but as well, it leads to technology because we may be able to do that technologically as well. You know, we may be able to actually learn how the, the field interacts and pull a little plug mm -hmm. in, in a little region of space to get a little control over gravity over here. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we, it could lead to gravitational control, energy production, you know, in, in health and, and well wellness and and life longevity i mean all these things yeah we, now we open the door to application right and this is where already some people are also experiencing with crystal because crystal yeah. in some way you can imprint these right yeah, uh, these, these uh, yeah. geometry yeah crystals have very highly structured molecules typically they're tetrahedral hexagonal geometry exactly and so all of a sudden water molecule is the same you know all of a sudden you see well water can be influenced crystals can be influenced and if you do these technologies and some of the experiments i've done already you know we're using crystal and plasmas together and all this stuff there is a path to a whole new... Uh, I, can, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> because the idea, when you start to understand how work the field, and not only vaguely, but the structure of the field, mm -hmm. 
And then you can think of disease like unbalance, you know, or, mm -hmm. or disconnection, mm -hmm. you know, uh, using this different technology, working at a, a more subtle level, can, right. can reorganize uh, the, the, the physical aspect. You That's know? right. This is probably where we are heading in the next, uh, <laughs> in the next uh, decennies. Yeah, I yeah. would say decennies, very close to that maybe. We know. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're actually not far at all um, because we have the technology today. Mm -hmm. Meaning, that it's, it, we have all we need. Mm -hmm. If this is true, um, and w now we have the math, so that it, so it's very precise to do the engineering. I think we're very close. For me, it's very exciting. Yeah. Because in some way, what we use to restore health now, no, no, the materialistic model we use pharmaceutical, which is pretty far of, you know, mm -hmm. to restore the perfect model in some ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we uh, use herb, plant, which is good also, which is more uh, a natural version of pharmaceutics. Right. And then you come with the homeopathic, which mm -hmm. is also very interesting. Right. You know, dilution, and then you have more... Water is involved. Yeah, we have more an informational, an informational uh, I would medium. say, so medium. Yeah. But still, you know, uh, you know, we, you have to adjust this information with the imbalance. I know how complex is homeopathy. Mm -hmm. Now we are getting it even deeper where you see here, this is how universe works. This is, this is the, the perfect information at that level. This is how we, the whole universe is organized with mm -hmm. this fractal organization. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, you call that the 64 grid uh, tetrahedron. Yeah, yeah, the and we have the model there if we can come back. Now it's like you, you, you have the... The, the perfect blueprint in some ways. Right. So, to when things are in balance. So, let's look now for the technology that will bridge, you know, mm -hmm. our little tiny physical aspect mm -hmm. with, with this core of information. That's right. Because, I mean, a lot of the issues that occur in biological structures had to do with, um, you know, information, disconnection, you know, areas. In one way, you could think of it as areas that lose resolution, that lose coherency, like they become somewhat... Yeah, I like that too. Coherency. Coherence. Yeah, yeah, they lose coherence, right? Because like, for instance, if you look at, you know, the water in the body is typically highly structured, mm -hmm. right? Highly coherent and highly structured. If you look at cancer cells, the water in there is very incoherent, disorganized, know, disorganized. Yeah. And so if you have an influence on the field, right, that mm -hmm. creates coherency, that, that generates high coherency in the water structure in the first place, you mm -hmm. know, and everything else, mm -hmm. then if you can beam that coherent, like if you can create a coherent environment, then that water can become coherent again. Exactly. And now you might be able to do, have a large influence in, in that disease, on that disease, so that everything goes back to balance. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we are doing already some research. Uh, we spoke about this uh, previously with uh, uh, quantitative uh, EEG, you uh -huh. know, brain mapping. Yes. Where we can see incoherence and coherence and, you know, different type of waves mm -hmm. and, and when people absolutely are in a coherent environment you know mm -hmm. they can research your health but all right so but uh, right you know now it's like adding technology to that right because to, uh, like an amplifier of coherency you know like it would be it, it, it could be really really powerful you know and so it, it it's really an amazing thing you could think of the brain you know, instead of thinking that consciousness is in the brain, you could think of the brain as like an antenna, like a radio set, tuned in to certain frequency mm -hmm. of the information structure of the vacuum. And so that everybody's tuned into a different, a little bit different mm -hmm. frequency. That's why we're all a little bit different because we observe the fractal from our position, so we get a little bit different information than mm -hmm. anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so we're tuned into that frequency, but then sometime mm -hmm. our, our, our radio set is a little bit off. You know, it, it, it's like, you know when you're tuning your radio, like sometimes it's clear and then you go a little bit off and it's like, 
you know, there's a lot of noise, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so when the brain goes into coherency, it's like it's just like a radio set. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the oscillator in the radio set, when you go into resonance mm -hmm. of the sync circuit in there, it, mm -hmm. it becomes no noise, right? And that, and so the brain is acting a little bit like that. And I, I'm doing research with um, William Brown, Dr. Brown, and and others. Um, that are mapping the microtubules in the brain and how like these things could be like teeny antennas. They're little, they're little tube, you know, s vortex structure that have water in the middle of it, like, mm -hmm. and and all this and and how this could be like the 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 antenna interacting with the vacuum and the information moving through that antenna. And some work was done previously by Penrose, a very famous physicist on it, and as oh, yeah. well. Yeah, so it it's not new, but it um we're we're with this new model we may be able to bring it to the next level so we become more and more clear so we can apply it better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can already see a, a lot of application <laughs> in in healing. <laughs> yes. Um is there other other uh, slide you like to comment for the the presentation? Uh, no, I think we've gone through most of them. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, if... Um, I don't think we had the torus in an animated way, but I think people can visualize that, that this information is in, in a toroidal field so that they can see that, like, um, yeah. they are feeding information to the vacuum and the vacuum feeding back information to them. I think that's a really important thing because... Uh, there's a lot of talk these days about you're creating your reality, you know? Exactly. That, that um, you're the one that's shaping your world. And it, in one way, this is telling you that's true. That not because of the double slit experiment and the Copenhagen interpretation, but because the field is an information field that you're interacting with. But, the, but what it's telling you as well is that it's feeding you back information too. So, so that it's not just you creating your reality. You're part of a larger and actually infinite fractal realities. But your fractal is probably has the most influence, like the global consciousness, you would mm -hmm. think, like the, the morphogenetic field. Interesting. Of, of the global. So, you know, the, yeah, you have, in your model, you have to... Take, not take care, but be aware that you, there is a, also other creator out there, right? That's right. You're not the only one. So this is why maybe sometimes you are uh, off, you know, when you want to create something. You have to be aligned with... The higher purpose. The, the higher purpose. Yeah, the, the larger fractal community of the information that's moving through so that the systems can self-organize. Otherwise, it would be complete chaos. You know, somebody... Interesting. Yeah. I like that, the, this idea. Because that was something kind of realistic, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the, of course, we, we have a, you know, we are kind of master of our life and so and so. But, you know, the, how we can in integrate this in the bigger plan was not very clear with the other model. I don't, I don't think so. Right, because, it, yeah. And, and then when, let's say, uh, you know, when someone is doing meditation, you mm -hmm. know, go within. And then, because now you are, you're more in, uh, within the structure, right? In some way, you are at the core of the information. Can we see this this way? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, you know, here you are within, without, and then when you are without, it's like you are what people see and what is your life and, mm -hmm. you know. So that's like the surface of the event horizon mm -hmm. and is the without. Sure. And and then within is the volume information, right? And so you're transferring information between the out and the in mm -hmm. and interpreting it and, and sending it back. And so those things are really kind of, um, you know, y you start to realize that information, right, like all the greatest discovery, they didn't come from without in general, right? Meaning... They might be uh, precursors or, or hints that came from without, but generally it's because Within. the researcher had a gut feeling, an instinctive feeling, exactly. or something. You know, Einstein talked about it. Many, you know. Yeah, Dr. Goswami speak about quantum creativity and right. 
And so it's that, like an insight, you know, it's a exactly. ha-ha moment. Uh, right. Yeah. And we even call it insight because mm -hmm. it comes from inside, exactly. inside us. Yeah. And so that's the link, mm -hmm. you know, to the universal consciousness, to the universal information network. Literally us going towards the proton, going towards the inside that of what actually makes us. And then there comes another unification, right, in this mm -hmm. view, which is the unification between spiritual people that tend to think it's all within and, um, and scientific people that tend to think it's all without, mm -hmm. that we don't have anything to do with it. And so now you can start to see, oh, actually, it's together. So it's a dynamic model. It's a dynamic model. Within, without, and then this yeah, yeah. feedback structure. And so when you go within, you all of a sudden have access to information. And deeper you can go, more information you can get. Right? Mm -hmm. And so eventually you can have people that all of a sudden talk about, like these masters that talk about enlightenment, where they felt like they could answer any questions you could throw at them you know, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. This sense of unity with the whole universe. You know, with, you're like this little bitty thing on the surface of this little bitty planet with the, around this little bitty sun relative to the universe and all this, but you still have this feeling of connectivity with the whole thing. You know, it's, it makes sense because if you go within in, in that point, you can singularity you can you connect with the whole universe yeah you plug in it's where like, all information is right it's like getting Absolutely. on the net you know exactly and and we may be able to reproduce that technologically so that it, we could take the information that's over here and send it across the other side of the galaxy over there without having to go all the, between all the points in between because it's already all connected you see, so like yeah, this, is, this is fascinating. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. It's 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 exciting to yeah. see a probably. And, and I like future. to see uh, research done in our university, and this is what you are doing in some way with your resonance uh, project. Project, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We yeah, have yeah. a little research park. We're doing, you know, um, advanced research in theoretical physics, but as well in the application to like try to bring this to a practical application in terms of technology and energy production, gravity control, you know, and all this stuff. I think it's critical for our planet oh, right now. This is what it is. This is what the way I see it. Too. Yes. You know, I see it also in medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot just, uh, you know, make sense of a health care that has two resources of healing, which is surgery and pharmaceutics. It's right. Like, it's <laughs> like to say here today we, are the, we have this crisis of energy, and then uh, we will not access the other source of that we know, gas and right. wind and all this. Right. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Our mission at the university, this is what it is. It's to open all these alternatives of healing that previously was said, oh, it's non-scientific. It's not teaching university. Right. Even though now we can see some application of some model of healing, but it's not door wide open. Oh, no. Sure. And, uh, and, and, and this is the, the idea to create a curriculum that can substantiate, that can give a foundation to this model of healing. And I think the information you bring this morning is really important because it's like the step after, mm -hmm. you know, you go in the mechanic of it. Right. And then, and then what will, and this is what I, I, I can predict your know, thing, right? This, as soon we will have application of that. Because at the end of the day, in, in healing, the one who heals in some way is the one who has his right. Right. <laughs> and, and people are just looking for that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and we desperately need that in, in our domain Absolutely. of healing. I was hearing a conference a few days ago about the fact that America will be self-energy sufficient in two, three years. That's incredible. This is what they, because now they found the gas. So we don't have oh, to right. import anymore this kind of petrol. Right. A, and I just wish we, we do the same thing with, with health. Right. A, and it's, it's a very, uh, what we just spoke about is very, for me, it's not only exciting, it's inspiring. Thank a, you. And now we have to take some uh, questions oh, yes. because I'm sure people uh, want to hear more about uh, 
what you have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I like also, uh, before we start this time, you know, do some, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, like uh, information about what is happening with the Quantum University. We have a congress uh, in uh, October 6 to 10. Uh, and I think we have some slide about it. And uh, it's time now to uh, sign up and register because uh, time is flying. And if you want to have a hotel, a good price, a flight, a good price. And uh, this year, uh, the subject will be mine uh, over matter, over medicine. And, uh, and I think you will fit very well in this group, you know? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, because we, you could absolutely animate the discussion, you know, <laughs> bit among uh, physicists and uh, and uh, I'm asking also this question this morning, you know, do you want more of uh, what is speaking uh, Nassim Haramein, you know, do you want more of that <laughs> stuff? And, uh, and, and yesterday we were, we were speaking also about uh, what you're doing, you, you're also doing course and seminar and... Uh, yes, and, uh, we're and, starting and, an and academy. And Quantum University will be absolutely pleased to, uh, to give equivalence for your program. So oh, the, wonderful, the, yeah. The, I won't make this, uh, I don't we discuss this just at the table, but I think it, it makes absolutely sense. And, uh, and, and people, uh, it's also to complete the fact that people who will sign up in our program this month uh, will have free seat, you know, for the Congress. Oh, wow. So it's time, uh, you know, uh, you go on our website, uh, you can contact an academic advisor uh, if you are interested in the program, or you can also plan for the Congress which is an event now that we host for over than 10 years, uh, the, the origin of the university. Mm. And, and what is nice is people gather together. We had last year people from 20 countries, and uh, it's like a family, you know? Yes. Uh, and then... Uh, That's great. It's like, you know, everyone reinforce each other, and they have also a lot. They are doctors, they practice this modality, and they exchange the uh, information about how they, they work. And the, the theoretical model that sustain you know, what they are doing uh, is, I know this because I'm you know, building this university now for years, is, is so important. Because it's like before these people had the intuition, they knew things, they intuit things. Mm -hmm. But they go around and people say, oh, you know, what you're doing is non-scientific, doesn't make any sense, you are doing voodoo, all kind of... Yes. Now they, we have a model of science that can give a ground of what they are doing. So mm -hmm. it, it adds professionalists, you know, confidence in what they are doing. Right. And the peace that you are bringing this morning, I think it's, uh, it's absolutely very important. Critical, you know, because yeah. we go, we do the ex this extra, I wouldn't say mile, but extra, you know, uh, where we can reach more the, this ancient model of healing. Because yes. at the core of that, the, there's a lot of information that still was in the air. You know, we spoke about the Yi Ching this morning. We can speak about, you know, Ayurvedic medicine, the chakra too. There's so much there yeah. that stayed just in the air. Like quantum physics, the way it is now. Kabbalistic can, tradition. Yeah, Kabbalistic cannot explain. Yeah. Now with this sacred geometry, this uh, uh, tetrahedron, you know, mm -hmm. where you are you made a, a, tw a 64 grids and, and uh, you know and the way you know you uh, you, uh, you you come with it and uh, you explain also how work the tourists it, it's like you know it, this is kind of the missing link and, mm -hmm. and and what is impressive you know we, we were speaking this morning and you you predict at least 80 event mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. And now this article is like, you know, you, you just nail it, you know, there is, you know, after that, you know, they have to do something. You know. <laughs> right, they, they right. cannot just ignore you. <laughs> the, well, they're, I don't they're doing think a so. pretty good job at ignoring me. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, you know, we will be here at the university, uh, <laughs> you know, if you, you. if you want to come well, back. Actually, there's more and more scientists that are coming to my side and they're excited about it. Um, you know, very professional physicists from around the world. It's still... Tentative, you know, they, it's, it's difficult because um, it takes a little bit of time. It's a big boat that we have to change oh, the direction. So Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, but it's coming along. Absolutely. And, and there is a collectiveness uh, all, uh, all over the world. 
mm -hmm. that you know go in that sense. That's right. And, and, and there would come a time. This is what I say. I say sometimes. I'm just I'm writing a book now. You you cannot stop that anymore That's because right. truth is there. Right. And then the result will come of, of with it as soon we have we yeah. do application of that. Right. So and people recognize that they you know they naturally will recognize fundamental truth. You know, and, and this is why things like E equals MC square, you know, became something so clear and so popular. And, you know, because it's like, oh, yeah, like that feels right. You know, energy equals mass and it's a feet of light and so on. Now we're getting like, but what is mass? What is energy and so on and so forth. And this is one question here. Then we, we have very technical question. Uh -huh. uh, you will see our <laughs> listener. Right, right, right. So from uh, Eonar here, uh, what is gravity? What is etheron energy, vortex mass? And, and what is sound? Is, is it a me uh, mechanical radiation or an, an electromagnetic one? Oh, that's okay. It's kind of a tough one, right? Yeah, that's, there's a lot you of questions. You answer that question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, that's a good question. Um, okay, well, what is gravity? As I've shown and shared, uh, gravity is actually the dynamics of this vacuum fluctuation of this information moving in a coherent matter in the region of space. So that, you know, just like the tub example, if you put your rubber ducky on the other side of the tub, the molecules over there in the water, they're like, incoherent and just going like this and all over the place so mm -hmm. your rubber ducking is not going anywhere but if you put it close to the vortex where the middle of the tub is well then it starts to orbit because the molecules in that region are all coherent and they're organized in that vortex structure so so the these gravity is a region of space mm -hmm. and actually mass is a region of space where there's a coherency dynamics in mm -hmm. the structure of the vacuum in that region. So that's what I proved in that latest paper, and it works out from cosmological object all the way to atomic structures. So that, that's kind of cool. Um, what is... Yeah, this is the other, the other question. Oh, the mechanical radiation? Uh, no, the uh, Edron energy, okay. the vortex mass. Yeah, well, that, that I just explained with the vortex, right? It, it is... That's why vortex math is so important. That's why Schalberger, you know, which was an incredible scientist during, during you know, at the end of the Second World War and so on, that uh, showed that the vortex dynamics in nature could be applied in all sorts of engineering ways to, like, create amazing things. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is um, mechanical reality. Uh, yeah, what is sound? Um, is it a mechanical radiation or electromagnetic one? Well, it depends. You know, in some ways, you could almost regard electromagnetic radiation as a really high frequency of sound, you know, reverberating in this information structure. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a part of more study I have to make and more, f and it's just oh, non-ending. I'm right? hearing something new now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sound? Well, because, um, not necessarily sound, but the electromagnetic field and how... Because it's a vibration. Yeah, because it's a vibration. Okay. And in, in, in this model, it's a vibration of mm -hmm. the field of energy. So, so you can imagine like you have a vortex here and you have an event horizon, and if you were to like make this, um, like if you look at the surface of that event horizon, you could see like this membrane is vibrating mm -hmm. very, very rapidly at the Planck level. You can imagine that interaction of all these waves creating the electromagnetic, you oh, know, field. Okay. And, and it, would, it would have a fundamental resonance frequency, right? It would, uh, it would hum like, more, you know, at certain frequencies for different and so it's literally like the music of the spheres you know from different wow. scales wow. um and so i've been starting to play with these math and i've been starting to think about how it, to express it mathematically but and there's there's more to be done but I, but it's already coming out with really cool stuff like like for instance if i if i calculate all the surface of all the protons in the universe right 
and then I calculate all the information that's on there and then I calculate the information that's on the surface of the universe if the universe is this big bubble with the radius that we observe then we find that it's a one-to-one -one relationship meaning like all the surface of all the protons in the universe have every Planck has an analog on the surface of the universe, right? Hmm. So it's like a harmonic relationship. Hmm. And, um, and so there's all sorts of applications to that. So, uh, you know, there's more to explore there, that's for sure. And some people who read, read Bible will like it, no? It's St. John Gospel. Oh. Au commencement, you know, it's like oh. at the beginning of the world oh. was the, the, the... The sound, the word. The right? word, the, the logos or the, yeah, something. Yeah, 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 absolutely. This like fundamental vibration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of comes together. And then this other one here, uh, can you speak about the vortex mathematic? You, you went through this in some way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say more about that? Because you, you spoke about the vortex now. Right, I don't know if right, you want right. to say. Yeah, no. Because you've done the calculation of that. And this is right. how, you, through doing this cal calculation, you were able to, ex to uh, explain or take it out the, the strong force, right? Right, right, so. uh, exactly. So the, this, uh, the way the, the information is spinning, so mm -hmm. like you can imagine that at the event horizon is spinning at the speed of light. So the little mm -hmm. proton you know, is spinning really, 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 really quick, which is not unusual for, I mean, we, we know subatomic particles are, you know, have this kind of energy, but, um, you know, you can imagine, like, when it's spinning at this uh, velocity, you, you can imagine that, like, it's dragging the information in its vicinity, it's, it's moving it, and it's creating these vortex dynamics all around it. Mm -hmm. um, and so these vortex dynamics, when you calculate them, mm -hmm. when you look at um, how, because, you know, special relativity, we know now that mass dilate since Einstein when it's accelerated. Mm -hmm. So imagine you have information that's accelerated near the speed of light. So the mass dilation, mm -hmm. I calculated all this stuff. Wow. And when I did, it gave the correct answer for the way the strong force becomes weak as you move away from that vortex. You see, so as you move away from the vortex mm -hmm. of the proton, for instance, mm -hmm. the gravitational field drops very, very, very rapidly mm -hmm. because the mass of the object uh, dilation is dropping because the velocity is dropping. So it's not just... So this is why they can hold together. That's right. And it's why, as well, we can separate them apart. Otherwise, that force would be so strong, we could never separate them. Mm, got it but, now. but if you move it just a little bit, all of a sudden, the, the force drops so quickly, huh. then it can go away. And, and why, when they spread it apart, the, the, this was, like you said, plasma? Or uh, how come? Because they were expecting something different, right? When mm -hmm. they tried to explode the... Yeah, when they... Oh, I, are you talking about the the gluon soup yeah, yeah they 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 realize as well that like when you get into these really high energy experiment you know in accelerators mm -hmm. and you get these things to start you know um like getting more we, we get more resolution on how these gluons and and quarks things actually operate although they're never free and so that's why i'm saying the proton is actually fundamental because it's mm -hmm. the only one that's stable the, all the other particles when you, when you collide when you break it when you create mm -hmm. it, it it's only very very short milliseconds when it's and so um, but when when they get the soup of these particles they act like a fluid huh. and that was unexpected from quantum standard model so um, and, and the reason why they act like a fluid is because they are part of that field of information. So uh. they actually, they spin, you know, they make these vortex in the mm -hmm. cloud chamber and they, they act like a, like a typical fluid. Hmm. And uh, let's take here another one. Uh, what could the mass, vibration and momentum have a color? And what frequency could they have regarding to the flower of life? Any thoughts? 
So can you add color to your information? Um, yeah. What could the mass vibration and momentum have a color? Right. Um, because now we're speaking about fractal, yes. well, geometry the, structure, yes. and you have someone out there here. What is the name? No, no names. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> Can well, uh, uh, step ahead and uh, try to bring the colors in that, right? Well, uh, in one way, what I was just describing about this, um, this uh, mass dilation mm -hmm. uh, and so on, it, it's almost like, uh, it's like uh, blue shifting. So mm -hmm. it, it, it has like a spectrum that it, you know, like as, as it accelerates or decelerates, just like the doubler effect. Um, when you hear an ambulance coming, mm -hmm. you know the sound gets um, stronger as it gets, and then further it moves, it gets longer. The the wavelength gets longer. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing, um, you know. So so yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, not necessarily in the visual spectrum, mm -hmm. but you could think of it as it. This whole thing is oscillating. Mm -hmm. It's like a big oscillating universe. So. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily colors we can see no. because our eyes are limited to a but maybe uh, out of our spectrum or something. outside the spectrum. Yeah, just like if you went all the way to gamma, but then then all of a sudden like there's that whole new spectrum. You know how before we only thought there was the visual spectrum, mm -hmm. and then we discover oh my God, there's infrared and ultraviolet and all this stuff, and then X-ray and. Uh, and, and now we have like a larger spectrum. Well, there's, there may be actually even a larger spectrum there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's right. When I wake up this morning, I s there was uh, on the balcony, I saw this nice rainbow. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. That, that's so nice in Hawaii. We get those <laughs> nice rainbow. We get the double ones too. They're so yeah. cool. Uh, another one. You will like this one because you are the first one who said, you know, center of the universe, there is uh, no, the galaxy, there is a black hole. Mm -hmm. And then you start to speak about black hole, the, uh, you know. Physics, so, yeah. And then here's the question. Is the atom a black hole? What about the proton? Is there a gravitational singularity there? Mm. That's, that's, that's key. Very good yeah, question. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, yeah, early on, I realized if, if everything is a fractal and can be divided, then the energy system in every point is since like this infinite amount of point, or at mm -hmm. least at, to the Planck level mm -hmm. um, for our universe, um, then everything must have the energy dynamics of a black hole. So I started to look and I thought, well, it would be the center, right, gravitational center of, of all the dynamics, the objects we see. So I start to, I looked at a galaxy and I thought, there's got to be a black hole in the middle of that galaxy, right? Um, and uh, at the time, that's 25 years ago. Yeah, that's years, many it, years ago. Yeah, it, they, it was absolutely not the case. You know, they didn't think so. They I think they, you were kicked out of the conference, right? I was that? definitely <laughs> in trouble in many cases um, and many arguments because at the time it was thought that black holes were really, really rare mm -hmm. and maybe they didn't exist at all. I mean, in, in most physicists thought black holes is kind of a weird part of Einstein's equation prediction and mm -hmm. you know they probably don't exist and you know and 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 in some ways you know we're coming to see that like it's not quite the right picture to think that it's just a thing that's absorbing everything that's actually stuff coming out mm -hmm. right? and uh, Hawking just came to conclude that just recently as well um, but this, uh, so, so at the time I said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to predict that we're going to find black holes in the middle of galaxies, in all galaxies, and that um, we're going to find that the black hole was there first, and then the galactic structure was hmm. generated. Yeah, that makes sense. And because it's... Because you have to start at the point of singularity. That's right. Right, where there's like... Kind of a dot at the beginning or something. Right, and then the, s the center of the spin, right? The, the shaft that everything spins around. And so, um, so I, you know, the, because from my view, 
the vacuum is spinning. The structure of space-time is already spinning. And mm -hmm. what we see as the galaxy is just the stuff is, is in the spin. Just like when you spin your coffee in the morning and it's black, mm -hmm. when you take the spoon out, if you didn't spin it too much, you can't see it spin. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you put the coffee in it, then you can see. Mm -hmm. It makes a galaxy, right? And so the same idea is that you know, the, 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 the black hole, the spin is in the structure of space-time, and the stuff that's in it makes it visible to us. Mm -hmm. so, and so then they eventually found black holes at the center of all the galaxies we looked at. And uh, it's pretty well accepted now that there's a black hole, a supermassive black hole at the center of most galaxies. But as well, um, they found recently, in the last few years, that now we're able to see far enough Mm -hmm. that previously from the galactic formation, the black holes were present. So that the black hole is not the result of the galaxy, but the galaxy is the result of the black hole. And so that, you know, those are predictions I made that are, you know, coming through now. And so the, to answer his question as well for the atom, what I'm saying is that the proton acts just like a cosmological black hole, where the strong force, it doesn't have the mass of the black hole if you don't consider the energy of the strong force that it, that's holding everything mm -hmm. to that proton. But when you do, then you get the exact mass of the black hole. So it's not approximately, it's exact, you know. So there's a, there's a pretty good chance that's correct and, and that you get the right range and all this stuff. But as well, it's saying that it's black holes are not the monster things that so when I say the nuclei of the atom, the proton is a black hole, it can give the wrong impression. Oh yeah, the, when I, I heard this first time, I said, you know, I was kind of lost because you have this kind of a f picture of the black hole, this monster devouring yeah. all the galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah sucking yeah. everything in. But you know, you have to add, and uh, we should look at this online. Uh, the, the the torque, you know, the right. The Taurus picture, because right. you have to understand this, and and this is part of the whole picture, you know. That's so right. this is how we can, we can. Uh, on yeah, they're talking the about balance. You mm -hmm. get a balance relationship between the spin of the black hole mm -hmm. and the surface of the black hole, so that so that you know when things spin, they pull out. They have exactly. centrifugal force. So th if you have a balance, then the the system is stable. Exactly. It's not just sucking stuff in. And even at the galactic level, now they're starting to see closer to the event horizon of black holes. And they're very surprised to see that most stuff actually doesn't fall in because the spin is high enough that mm -hmm. it's keeping things All up. depend where, from what angle, perspective you are looking at the universe. That's right. Are you at, at no, I wouldn't say perspective, but at what scale? At, Can we say that? That's right. At yeah. what scale, how far you are from the object you're ob observing, mm -hmm. or even if you're looking at the poles or if you're looking at the equator. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the poles, you might see stuff falling in. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at the equator, you might see stuff coming out. Exactly. Right. And here another question. Uh, where, why there is no article about Nassim and other concept of Nassim in Wil Wikipedia? The Free World Encyclopedia. <laughs> in well, but uh, by the way, there is nothing about Dr. Paul DeWine, too. You know? There is? <laughs> no, oh. Not yet. And I, maybe I like better not having anything there. You right. Know? Well, May yeah, lucky you. <laughs> because so, I have uh, some uh, mishap. With yeah, I let, I let you answer <laughs> the question. But doesn't mean this is the reference of everything. You no, know? There that's is, uh, true. People have to understand that, too. Yeah. But, you know, uh, well, you, people may be, may be uh, surprised to find that actually Wikipedia is quite well controlled. Mm -hmm. um, it's not actually anybody that can just write in Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very um, edited and, and, um, and censored. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, my work is censored in many different matter, you mm -hmm. know, in physics journals and all this. Um, I have difficulties publishing and all this because I'm outside everything. Um, so my... Uh, what happened with Wikipedia is that there was an article about me in Wikipedia and uh, every few days it would get 
vandalized like some person that would get really upset with me you know would start writing you know not with me but with my theories and all this would start writing all kinds of stuff about me on that and um it would um you know like many of the editors that typically edit wikipedia were were putting stuff on there that was incorrect or mm -hmm. or not not um not accurate and so uh it eventually became to a point where um the controversy was so tremendous and there was some reason that they would could be deleted so it got deleted mm -hmm. and uh and then it's been deleted since then and um you know nobody has dared to try to put another uh entry there um eventually hopefully it will come back around and it will be accurate um it, there's a lot of controversy about what i'm doing out there there's no doubt and you would expect that um, you know I, I have to i have to say my word too because you know uh you know i'm a physician mm -hmm. and of course like all my, the listener here we are very interested in the stuff of quantum physics and it reminds me a little bit when i start to study homeopathy you know <laughs> You go to this school, and here you have Unisys, you know, saying, oh, what does the complex is? has nothing, nothing <laughs> good. Or, right, right. And in this world of quantum physics, people have to realize there is a many point of view, mm -hmm. many, uh, you know, concepts. There is a lot of politics, you know, and we exactly. cannot avoid that. Mm -hmm. and, and someone who has put his little f foot in, in the research understand how this world is is very difficult there is a lot of interest interact yeah. einstein some way uh, years ago didn't have this kind of dilemma he came and boom you know he mm -hmm. i think that something was very special because it's like you know you, he 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 made an open eyes to the whole world yeah now this is not where we are exactly and he got Many, the, uh, yes. well he got the help of Planck. You know, he got the help of somebody that was already very established mm -hmm. that said, oh, maybe we should look at this. And then the other people took him seriously because before that, Einstein, you know, was actually laughed at. But most physicists, I mean, they didn't, what, that time is not constant? You oh, know, I mean, that well, was that, huge what he well, was speaking about. Yeah, exactly. So. But, but since then, many physicists has run with the ball and they came mm -hmm. with all kind of theories. String theory, this mm -hmm. theory, this mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. People has to understand that, right? And, and then, then you, um, and then you come along, and mm -hmm. and what y you put together is is like you know shifting another completely another paradigm, right? And, yeah, and so it's it, difficult. It, I can understand, you know, it's very disturbing. It is disturbing. I was disturbed the first time. <laughs> I, I look at it, but then you have to look a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. and you know, there's one day or another, they w they cannot deny the the your the the research and, and the mathematics of it and, the, right. and, and then uh, you know one day or another that will be absolutely uh, indeniable so I'm, I'm right sure I, I think so because you know like right now for instance with the problem of the radius the proton that they're having they're trying to find all sorts of ways to patch the standard model to make it work and it doesn't you know necessarily work and so you know here is a beautiful simple solution and i think it has a lot of merit and it will come through i know it will and it's it's a battle it's it's a little difficult and it's normal that it is people are not you know you got as well people have to re realize like in the standard model there's investments that are en enormous enormous uh, over a hundred years of physics accelerators that you know to find the higgs boson you know that cost 13 billion dollars to build you know it's like oh my god this guy comes around we're just gonna scrap all this you know so it's gonna take a little bit of time and and at the end of the day the typically you know people may have a knee-jerk reaction when they see this like oh my god it's so outside but um but at the end of the day it's not actually like we're gonna scrap all this it's just it's the next step it's actually it integrates nicely we just got to realign some of the stuff that wasn't quite well understood and then all of a sudden it it's gonna flow the, the, this is the way it's it it's kind of the next step right it's next step
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can comment about the same thing in, in uh, integrative medicine or natural medicine. You mm -hmm. know, it's the same thing. You right. know, we don't have the same budget, you know, than has pharmaceutical company. We should do a lot, much more research, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how to bridge what you're speaking about this morning and other physicists to mm -hmm. the domain of healing. We're completely aware of that. And right. this is why, you know, th I thank all the participants this morning to be with us and because they make the, co the co collective consciousness move in that direction. Right. And uh, so uh, I have to tell you, we are more far from where we were 30 years ago or 25 years ago, you know. But so that's how long it takes. So just be patient a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> yeah. Another good question here. The fundamental geometry of space-time basically regulate energy, it's very well said, mm -hmm. and information flow. Mm -hmm. So is it true that human mind is uh, the same geometry? Yes, I think so. I, I, you know, I'm saying this loosely, but you could think of the human mind as a quantum computer that's actually interacting with this field. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I like to think of it as a radio, you know, because it's like a crystal oscillator, you know, mm -hmm. like the old radio sets were at the little crystal oscillator. Mm -hmm. in it. Uh, and uh, it's kind of tuned in there into this fundamental geometry and and you can and you can think of it as it is regulated uh, in the same way that is the proton mathematics I wrote or or other mathematics where the vortex flow the, the dynamics of that field the literally you know the the uh, surface to volume ratio all these things are important um, and, and fundamental to how the uh, regulation of the information is occurring. Mm -hmm. so, so you can imagine that if uh, new parts of the brain lights up, mm -hmm. it's like more, you can think of it as more surface to volume area, all of a sudden there is more information that can move through the system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like your radio got better resolution, so that now you have like better crisp, you know, music coming out. Absolutely. And so, uh, absolutely, I think that's a really good point. It's a good question. And I'm uh, thinking about the Congress. Uh, you know, I don't know if you, we can bring this. Uh, you know, uh, the work of Dr. Dispenza is, is very amazing and really uh, fit. Uh, it's a perfect fit of what you're speaking about. You know, when the last time I, I participated to his workshop, he was working with uh, fractal geometry to induce meditation. So we were oh, wow. a group of three, four hundred, and then, you know, uh, uh, be uh, visualizing this uh, fractal. And it's, a, it's kind of an application of what you, you just speak about. You wow, know? that's the, interesting. So yeah. it's, a, it's another way to, you know, reorganize the field. Right. And, and Dr. Dispenza will be one of our, our speaker, and uh, he came last year. And we will do this. I don't know if we will do the fractal one, but I know every year he come and he guide the, the, the group in meditation in the morning. Using and, the geometry. Uh, I, I will invite him to use that because it's very powerful. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's so the Congress is about that too. It's not, we speak about this concept. Mm -hmm. And then we like during the event, you know, uh, that would be 6, uh, 9, uh, 10 October, people experiencing. This right. is very important. And, and, and plus, you know, we will have at the Congress something absolutely fantastic. Everybody that will be as participating will have a brain map. Can you believe that? Wow. So you, yeah. want, to, you want to know how, how coherent is your brain and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and how in the need of doing this kind of uh, fractal meditation is important for you or so on. Wow. So every participant, you know, will we'll be have their brain map. The brain mapping and we will have also a day. People can compare brain maps and <laughs> yeah. talk about them. Yeah, and uh, so because we want to make this very, very practical. And, and grasping the concept you speak this morning, it, of course, there is an intellectual part of it. Mm -hmm. But in some way, uh, you know, it's, it's easier when you, have the, you go in this space within. What yes. you, sp you, you spoke about yes. and, and this uh, and experience it. And, and experience it mm. and this is uh, this is our event you know it's about putting uh, you know f uh, renowned people together speaking about this concept but also experiencing 
Right. So uh, don't forget, you know, to prepare your flight and hotel and join us. And uh, I'd like to have a feedback of, you know, how many people would like, be interested to have uh, Nassim uh, uh, Haramein nice. there, yeah. you know, and be with us. That would uh, be my pleasure uh, to I be think, there. I uh, think that would, would be very exciting. Yes. It's very exciting. Uh, okay, another one here. And I know the time is flying. What uh, do you think about the multiverse theory, multiverse or multi-universe? You know, people speak about. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all this movie to the parallel universe and world within mm -hmm. world and will. Mm -hmm. From mm -hmm. what I, when what you said, I think it can fit pretty well. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it depends. There is no end. No end. You know. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's it. Clearly, you know, if when you see when you see nature. When you see the natural, the natural fractal structure that we see everywhere, and you can and you can see the the replication of the dynamics at different scales, I think that uh, it's it's not a big leap to mm. think of our universe being part of a larger one and that one being part of a larger one to mm -hmm. infinity, that we are part of this multiverse, infinite structure. Now, if he's talking, if the person, uh, could be a she, is talking about the literal multiverse theory in terms of what is being said in physics, I think it's partially correct, um, meaning that, um, you know, the tendency is to, is to visualize parallel universe. And I don't think they're parallel. I think they're, I think they're embedded within each other. Yeah, and, this is more the... You said the puppet, the Ru Russian puppet, you know, right. one in, inside an hour, one in another yeah, one. Yeah, 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 the Russian dolls. Dolls, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so more like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, and so I actually was making calculations recently, I, I'm really excited about, about trying to figure out like the birth of our universe, like what the thing we're calling the Big Bang, you know, because that dynamic imagine that dynamics is occurring at the proton level now imagine that that proton is um is taken out of our universe like imagine it all of a sudden it you know it gets that one proton gets close to the surface the event horizon of our universe and it gets pulled out right when one falls like in. a seed yeah like a seed yeah exactly like conception and then yeah, I, I see where you're going now. Right. <laughs> the seed, the matrix and the seed. Right. Because you define, at the same time, it's like you said, the universe is finite yeah. within it, and then the, 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 the within structure is infinite. Right. So now you have one seed that yeah. gets in another matrix, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And now it's experiencing a different pressure differential, a different density mm -hmm. in that larger universe. So all of a sudden it would inflate very, very rapidly. So our universe might be one of those seeds that came out from another universe, you know, into that larger universe. Now I'm revealing some of the stuff I'm actually working on like right now. Oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and so... <laughs> we are in the really actual, you know. Yeah, in the bleeding edge. <laughs> and so that really kind of... And, and so far the calculation I make comes out. It comes out right, wow. so it's it's exciting because it gives you a new idea of the birth of the universe, where you don't just have a big bang, you don't know what happened before. Now you understand it. It's almost like conception. Conception. You know, when you have like the seed, you know, that comes out, and then. And the people who read Bible would be happy here because you know you are were created at the image of God. So right. In other words, is he's the, the conceptor. He's the, the right. And the matrix says you have the yin, the yang, the mother, the father. The father, exactly. Oh so boy. we would um, be like the f we came out of a father universe into the mother universe, and then expanded to our size and and the math. Um, the so it the math is great because it it starts to tell you like you can start to extrapolate how many of these universes is there in our bigger universe. Mm -hmm. You know, and because now you got the scale relationship, so you can work it all out. And so you can actually theoretically explore things past our universe, <laughs> uh, which, you know, is definitely a whole other frontier of exploration. So tell me, uh, on this kind of journey or, you know, uh, 
Do you feel other physicists that are heading in this way, or I, I think I probably, so. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, I, it, there's more and because more. Because uh, that's you know, it's it's coming along. I, it, there's more and more physicists that think that way, that instinctively feel this is this is the way to go, and it's coming out in many different ways. For instance. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a popular paper that just came out. It, it got a lot of press from two astrophysicists called the Planck star. Mm -hmm. And in this paper, they are describing how a black hole, um, you know, information structure uh, actually will go, will, will go to a certain size, which, uh, you know, in, in, uh, and, and, then, and then bounce back, meaning that the information is not lost. It's constantly recycled mm -hmm. into the universe. And, and that paper solves a lot of problems like the, the information loss parad pra paradox and all this. And, so, and when you look at the math mm -hmm. that was used, mm -hmm. the equations I published almost a year prior are in there. So, wow. so you know, they, it, it, and, and that's because they're using this Planck fluctuation, like the vacuum structure information uh, structure. And so, so it's coming out many different ways. There's other two Italian physicists that published another paper along the same lines with using that vacuum. So it's really becoming more and more popular popular and mm -hmm. it, it, the idea is is permeating the physics community that space-time is not smooth that at the Planck level it's pixelated with all these, these hmm. sets of information and now uh, how does he, he view or you view the dreaming mind in relation to waking consciousness Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. Well, the you, you answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could think of uh, our our life, you know, as um, as uh, like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. There's two sides to the event horizon. There's there's the external side and there's the internal side, and the two are in relationship with each other. And and you can like go from the, you know, like the information moving across, you could think at the fractal level of the proton, it's like occurring really fast. And so when you go fast, further and further from that side, it's slowing down, right? But, but so you could think of like during the day and during the night, we're going from one side to the other, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we think of our dreaming state, mm -hmm may be actually an experience of the information that's in the structure of space. Hmm. Um, and um, we're experiencing it in the state of being connected to our inside instead yeah. of being connected to our outside. And so... And reorganizing the information, probably. Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, maybe um, integrating. Integrating, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so dreaming may not be completely you know, s manufactured from your mind, meaning that, and maybe that's why people have deja vu, you know, like these, where you dream something that happens in the future, mm -hmm. and when it happens in the future, you, exp you go, oh, I dreamed of that. And, you know, it's so clear, like they, they had in that moment, like, you know, oh, I could smell the smell, and, it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it all comes, and I know what she's going to say right now mm -hmm. because I, I dreamed it, right? And mm -hmm. it's so exact. Um, this might be because there is, you're actually interacting with that field and, and, and actually moving through the timeline mm -hmm. in that field in a future timeline and actually pulling information from a future timeline in that film. That gets a little okay, more Okay, so you, when you are within, there is no space-time. You are in this interconnectivity where you know, there is no space and time. You can mm -hmm. access future or you can be in another place. There's, there is space, but no time. Meaning that time is a function. Think about it this way. I mean, we're starting, there's other physicists as well writing papers that are starting to realize that time is actually a result, not a fundamental principle. Huh. Um, but I like to think uh, this way. 
no memory, no time. Right? If you can't remember anything, if there's no memory, mm -hmm. there is no sequential concept, there is no evolutionary, mm -hmm. you know, there's no time. Mm -hmm. And since we see evolution, there must be an information recording of time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 of space, meaning that as you move through space, you may be recording information mm -hmm. on the structure of space itself. So, and, and so imagine that all the information is recorded in, in this space. That's, that's the information that's moving around everywhere, mm -hmm. that's making mass and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Now, um, I, the ancient, I think they called that the uh, Akashic record in some yeah. cases and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Now, imagine that like this information that, that's recorded in space is actually able to be translated, right? So that, so that this bit of information mm -hmm. and this bit of the information, this bit of information, they have like a vector that is going to predict a very specific event. In the future over there, okay. right? And 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 you actually access that information from all the bits of the present, and you predicted that event. And so, a déjà vu could be this kind of experience of a future. Yeah, I think I have one of this. You had one of those. Yeah, I'm I'm speaking about it in my book. Oh yeah, uh, that should be out, you know, in a few months. Oh, that's great. And then uh, how's it called? Creative Integrative Medicine. Oh wow, yeah. It's I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I see the time now is flying, and I'm sure you know we have to, we have to invite you again. I like to have a feedback of people who participate this morning. You know, how they would like to have you in our congress. Uh huh. I know it's pretty full, but you uh, know we will see. You okay. know what's yeah. happened there. And uh, I like also again uh, repeat that uh, the Congress is October 6 uh, to 10 uh, because that will be also an opportunity to do the neurofeedback certification. People are very excited now today to be to have this techni technology in their in their practice or clinic. So we will have an extra day where there will be a hands-on where they can be uh, certified, and then uh, we will have the brain mapping and all these uh, very renowned. Uh, doctors so it's a it's a, a unique event the not missing to me to miss and then uh, uh, also when people uh, register in our program this month you know they can have a free seat there so this is another uh, oh, way to, to welcome people yeah. and I like also to uh, we have a, a slide here on the resonance uh, which is that uh, is yeah that is we 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 picked that so it would be uh, resonances and I can recognize your logo here yes yes and I think today you know it's about cooperation you know you are doing a, an extraordinary work and uh, you know we like to pursue this relation of exchange and uh, absolutely be at the you know at the you know ahead ahead of everybody about this information this is very important because at the end what is it for us it's translating healing. Right. It's translating new technology and a better understanding, you know, mm -hmm. how work, you know, these medicine. Yeah. And also uh, to, to provide a, a, a scientific ground. Right. So it's critical. It's, it's critical. Yeah. So I really congratulate you for, you know, what you achieved. Because Thank for me, you. it's huge. It's huge. You know, we speak about it. Uh, you know, the, this article you came with, and I think it will be... Uh, you know, in a few years, you know, I think right. I'm sure we will look in our <laughs> library of uh, uh, World TV, and uh, you know, this this I'm very honored today to have you on this uh, program. Thank, thank you. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, and I absolutely agree. You know, it's time for everybody to collaborate so that we can work together and increase our capacity to bring this to the world. Oh yeah, there's so much work to do. There's so much work to do. Absolutely. And there's so much good work that's being done, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, uh, there's so many breakthroughs mm -hmm. and people are transforming very quickly. So Absolutely. it's really good, like we need to pull our resources, everybody together and, and everybody out there that's, that's participating by by being present, by seeing these things, mm -hmm. by going to these congress and all this. Absolutely. And every, bit, every bit makes a big difference. 
And I want to thank them uh, this morning to have been with us. And I think, you know, we just passed uh, the two hours now, so that will be uh, the way we end. And uh, thank you for everybody to be, uh, have been done with us this uh, today. And thank you again to you, uh, Nassim. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you very much. Mahalo. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>